Welcome to Interlinear Bible Training Part 1. We're going to break away from our standard format due to the nature of explaining this particular resource. There's a lot of tangents, details, and if we use the interactive format, it would become very tedious. So if you are interested in slowing down, uh, just simply slow down the video player or simply rewind on the parts that you need to review. So let's begin with the interlinear Bible. What is it? Well, let me go ahead and go to our library icon. So I'm going to click on the library icon right here. And I'm going to type in NASB 95. That's going to be the New American Standard 95. There it is in the library window. I'm going to click and open it. Now, an interlinear Bible is unique in that you have access to the English as well as to the Hebrew and Greek. And with Logos, there's even more information that's connected to these resources. Now, this is called a reverse interlinear because traditionally interlinears were Greek. And so the word order would follow the Greek text order. But since this is a reverse interlinear, we're going to follow the English order. And that means the Greek and Hebrew will follow the English order. Now, an interlinear Bible has a lot of things connected to it. So we're going to take our time and walk through all the various menus, controls, and things that you can do to customize this resource and make it much more user-friendly. So let's begin first right here at the top left. This is the, I call the hamburger menu, three horizontal lines. And when you click on that, you're given access to the table of contents. Now there's two menu options right here. The one at the left represents the table of contents. The second one represents the note search feature. Currently, by default, it opens up to the table of contents, and that's given right here with this label. If you were to click the table of contents, that would confirm that as well. Now, like all the table of contents in all the Logos books, it's pretty straightforward. You have a hierarchical table of contents. So here we are, Genesis. We click the triangle, and then we have the next level in this case, chapter level detail. Now, if you want to go further detail into verse range, that's where the location box right here is where you put in the specific location you want to go to. So if we want to go to Revelation chapter 22, verse 1, I want you to notice what I've done here. All I've done is I've typed in Revelation space 22 space 1. Notice I did not have to type the whole book out. I used the space bar, I put in the chapter, notice no colon or period or any other symbol, I just did a space again, and then I put in the verse number. I highly recommend that you use this procedure when typing in verses. It's a lot quicker, and it's a good habit to get into. In fact, Logos actually accepts two-letter code abbreviations. It's usually the first two letters, though there can be some exceptions with books like Philippians, Philemon, Judges and Jude, etc. But if we typed in RE, you can see right away that the book chapter is given. So if we weren't sure what would PH open up, well, we can see it doesn't open up any specific Bible. So then we do PHI. Again, that's still not helpful. PHIL, and then we see it's Philippians. So be aware that most first two letters of any book name is going to get you there unless there's another one that's very similar. So Revelation, RE, space 22, space 1. Personally, I like to use the first three letters. That's the easiest. Now, once you type in the Bible passage, as we've noted earlier, this menu appears and confirms the passage you're studying or the passage you want to go to. In this case, Revelation 22.1. Now, you can press Enter, and that'll take you there, or you can click on the menu. Both will work just fine. I'm going to click on the menu option. All right, great. We're at Revelation 22, verse 1. It's really that easy to navigate. Now, if you're in the Bible, and the way you know this is right here on the top, we've got this orange bar. That little orange bar tells you what book is activated or has focus, which means whatever book has focus, that's the book that's going to accept your keyboard shortcuts, etc. Now, here I opened up my MacArthur Study Bible, and uh, you can see that the orange line is now there. And if I simply click on the other tab of the Bible, you can see the orange line has moved here. So just be aware of that orange line. 
That helps you visually know which book has focus. All right, so we're in Revelation 22.1. If we click on our Bible and scroll down, you'll see that the location box changes. We're at verse 4. Now, if you scroll down and you're in between a verse and you're not sure, this can happen. We're looking at verse 9, but the box says verse 8. How do we resolve that problem? Click on the number 9 or anywhere in the verse, and that'll immediately sync up the verse location with what you're looking at. So be aware of that. Another item that's pretty cool is a keyboard shortcut. If you press on a PC, Control G, that'll immediately put you in the box. If you're on a Mac, you can press Command G as in George or Go, and that will put you in the verse location box. And that works on any book, so it's a real handy shortcut. Instead of clicking in there, if you know you're in the Bible or you're in the book, Control G or Command G, and you're good to go. Let's next return to the table of contents and look at the other icon, which is the note icon. Now, when you click the note icon, you will see a filter list below. Notice we can choose the type of note we want to look at. That is a note that came from highlighting or a note that came from the note tool. I'm going to click on highlights. Now, immediately when you click on any of the filters, the search results at the right will change. Notice that in my case, I have 893 highlights. Now, you're probably wondering why the view is organized this way. Well, the view is controlled by this icon. So when I click on this menu option, I'm in the sentence view. If I click on verse, I get the verse view, paragraph view, pericope, which is a longer range of text, and then the article. Now, again, this will change on the type of book where your notes locate as well. I recommend the sentence view. That's the easiest. Now, the way this works is all we're seeing now at the right is just those verses that have a highlight associated with that passage. Now, we can narrow this down some more. For example, we could click my filter here for Revelation. Now, I got it down to 27. You notice that if I go to the top, I see my first verse from Revelation, Revelation 1.14. And there's no highlight being viewed here. The reason you don't see this highlight is because I've disabled the highlights from being viewed in my Bible. So let's turn those on. So we're going to go to the three dots in the shape of a pyramid and click it. A menu opens up. Now you may need to click the triangles to minimize all the first level of menus. And you'll see that I've got an option that says notes and highlights. Let's check that and then notes and highlights corresponding. Let's check that. As you can see, it's turned on the highlights, and now we can see why Revelation 1.14 came back in our search results. But there's another thing you need to be aware of. If you click the triangle next to notes and highlights, you'll see a variety of notebooks or your highlighting palettes. Those need to be enabled as well. If they're not enabled, then you won't see any highlights. So keep this in mind. So my advice is, have everything checked, and then you turn them all on or all off. If it's too much confusion, then you may need to go through and organize which ones you want to see and don't want to see. So be aware that you may be looking for the note, but because the note has been disabled, you don't see any highlights. So understand that connection. Now I'm going to click on the three dots in the shape of a triangle to turn off the menu. So this is a wonderful way to search for notes and highlights in your preferred book or Bible. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click our three dots one more time, and I'm gonna uncheck notes and highlights to turn all of those off. To reset the filter, there's a couple ways to do this. You can click the individual X, and that will get rid of it, or you can just simply click all, and now your Bible is back the way it was, and you can view it without looking at all that information. So be aware that you can look at the table of contents and get access to the notes through this hamburger menu at the top left. All right, we've talked about the verse location. That's what this box is for. Let's go to the right, and this is the inline search icon. Let's go ahead and click that. Now, the reason it's called inline is because it actually puts the search box in the line right here. Normally, if you want to search the Bible, you'd go over here to the left, click on the search button, and you'd search your Bible this way. Now, there's pros and cons to each. Personally, I like using the Bible search window all by itself. I don't like to clutter up my window. I like to see the search results separately, 
and it's much easier. But on occasion, it can be pretty handy to do an inline search. Now you need to be aware that the inline search has three search capabilities. Right now, mine defaulted to basic. If I click basic, I have a Bible search and I have a morph search. So those are the three searches I can run within the Bible. Let's choose Bible. So we'll click on basic and choose Bible. Now, right away, you'll see the search criteria is all Bible text, all passages. If we click all Bible text, you can see that we can search fields and other items within that. Very handy. And if we click all passages, we can change the range of what we want to search. Now, in the search box below, we can type in a phrase. I'm going to type in justification and press enter. What is going on at the right is my search results are listed. Notice that Logos does tell you how many hits you have. This is a good habit that as soon as you type it in and press enter, look over here. That'll tell you right away if you've got search results or not. Logos highlights it, makes it easy to find. Currently, my view for my search result window is pericope. Let's change this to verse view. Notice the significant change in the view. All three hits now are easily viewable right here in the search window. Notice my Bible is kind of hidden temporarily so I can more easily see my search results. So this can be handy when you're trying to do a word search and you just want to see the results real quick without having to open a new window. So I love this feature, very handy. Notice at the right, you have a keyboard. This allows you when you click it, I'm gonna click it now, to search on an English word, Greek word, or Hebrew word. And that means you could literally type in those. So you'll have to know the keyboard and the phonetic spelling to do this properly. Let's leave it at default. Once you're done searching, you got what you want, uh, you could click at this X to clear it. But before we do that, let me show you one little tip. With the verse listed here, I'm gonna click on Romans 4.25. Notice how it opens up a new Bible window. So now you can look at your Bible window separately from your search results in case the verse range is a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and click on the X on the tab to close here. To close the search results, I'm going to click on X. That cleared out the search box, and now we're back to our Bible view. Now to completely turn off the inline search, you click the X right here. But before we do that, let me show you another feature you'll see that there's a send to option right here. So let's do another search again. This time we're gonna type in the word temple. Now I'm gonna click on the send to button right here and notice what I can do. I can send this bibliography document. I can send this passage list to a document. Search panel can open up, visual filter document, word list document. This is especially handy when you're looking to kind of capture your search results. So I'm gonna click on passage list document. In a few moments, every verse that was in my search results has now been exported to a passage list. Very handy. If we click on the send to again, let's do bibliography document. Notice that it actually brings back a bibliography citation for every verse. That's kind of obnoxious, not very useful there. Let's click on the send to again. Let's do search panel. Now, all that did was take your search, stick it into a new search panel, and now you can look at it more thoroughly. This is handy when you started a search and you're like, oh, you know what? I wish I had opened up a search window. Now you can do that quite easily. Let's close this tab by clicking on the X located here. All right, let's click on send to. Let's choose visual filter. A new visual filter window is open. There's temple. Let's go ahead and click on formatting and change the color to blue. Now, the reason you're not seeing the blue appear is because I currently have my visual filters turned off. You have to be aware of this. So let's click the three dots in the shape of a triangle, locate visual filters, and check it. Let's go ahead and click the three dots in the shape of a triangle to close down the menu. And there it is. Temple is now highlighted in blue. Sometimes it's handy to convert your search results into a visual document so that in the future, you will be able to notice that. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my visual filter. So we'll click on the three dots in the shape of a triangle. I'm going to click the triangle to expand visual filter. Now my visual filter is named untitled visual filter. So if we go down alphabetically, we'll eventually come to untitled visual filter number three. I'm going to uncheck untitled visual filter three. And you'll notice now that temple is no longer highlighted in blue. So that's the real flexibility of this visual filter that you can create on the fly. You can turn on these visual filters whenever you need them. All right, let's go ahead and click the X to close down the search results. And I'm going to go ahead and click the three dots again. 
to turn off the visual filters. And then click the three dots in the shape of a triangle to close this menu. So the inline search is real handy. Now you can turn off one of two ways. You can once again click on the inline search icon and that'll close it. Or you can go over to the far right and click the X right here and that'll close the search result window as well. As I said, there's a lot here to cover. Let's continue with the visual filter icon. That is the three dots in the shape of a triangle. So I'm going to click on this and notice that a menu opens up. Now there's a lot of things that you can choose from here. Let's begin with resource. It should already be checked. If not, you definitely want to check it for this training video. Now when you click the triangle to expand it, you're going to see a lot of information. Now I'm going to change Bibles for this demonstration so you can see this because the New American Standard by default is an inline Bible of verse by verse view. So let me click on the X, close the window. I'm going to click the library icon and I'm open up the King James Version. All right, the King James Version is opened up and let's begin to look at the menu options. Now I'm going to click on the three dots in the shape of a triangle, click and expand the triangle next to resource. And let's begin with each item here. Addressee labels are that little icon that if someone is speaking to someone, you're going to see that. So let's go give you an example of that. Let's go to the book of Acts and we'll scroll down to verse 4. And you can see the speaker icon and you can see this person icon. Now I'm going to click on the three dots in the shape of a triangle and I'm going to uncheck addressee label. Notice the little person icon appeared and disappeared. So that's the addressee label, which is really handy. So here we have Jesus speaking and it tells us who he's addressing. In this case, the disciples. I find that to be very handy, so I leave that on. Let's click the three dots again in the shape of a triangle. The next section is Bible text only. Let's click the triangle to expand that. Now this section will impact the view of your Bible. And this is really important because you can really customize the Bible to make it more visually appealing to you. So we have Bible text only checked and we have Bible text formatting. Now what that impacts is red letter. So you can see how when I toggle it, the red letter goes away. It also affects italicized words. So that makes a big difference. So you can see here at the top right, the word them. If I uncheck that, them is no longer italicized. You want to see words when they're italicized because that tells you if they've been inserted by the translator. Chapter verse number is pretty straightforward. If you uncheck it, it's no longer there. Footnote indicators are those nice little footnotes to tell you things about the Bible. Sometimes they have cross references, translators notes, etc. But if you want those to be removed for easier reading, just uncheck it. Then we have non-Bible text. This represents those chapter headings, paragraph headings, things like that that inform you where you are in the Bible. So you can uncheck that as well. And then it's one verse per line. I love this feature. I'm going to uncheck it so you can see what happens to my King James. Notice now that I'm looking at paragraphs. When I click my three dots in the shape of a triangle, now I can see the verse numbers a whole lot easier. And this is my recommended view, looking at the Bible one verse at a time. Very handy. So as you can see, this is very useful in formatting your Bible to make it easier to read and use. Now you may have noticed as I'm floating my mouse over each of these sections, a little triangle appears over at the right inside a circle. When you click on that, you have a menu choice that says show in all appropriate resources or do not show in any resources. What this allows you to do is make one setting change for all these types of Bibles. So right now I want Bible text formatting in every Bible. So I'm going to click on my white little triangle. Let me do that again. Click the three dots float my mouse over Bible text formatting, click the triangle, and I'm going to choose show in all appropriate resources. That means from this point going forward, all my Bibles will have Bible text formatting. So if you like having all your Bibles with one verse per line, float your mouse over one verse per line, click the triangle, click on show in all appropriate resources, and now anytime you open up a Bible, it'll be listed one verse at a time. So you make one change in one Bible and it impacts all other Bibles. That's a great time-saving tip. Let's click the three dots again. And this time let's collapse the Bible text only. The next option is community tags. These are tags that people have done and Logos shares those with you if you wanna see them. So again, click the triangle, choose show in all appropriate resources. 
corresponding search results can be really handy and we're going to leave that checked and this allows you to search and see the results repeated elsewhere corresponding selection is pretty handy let me show you how this works so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up a greek bible the na28 and i'm going to type in na28 in the search box and then click nestle alon greek new testament you can use any new testament of the greek it doesn't matter i'll click the three dots and again corresponding selection watch what happens when i choose being assembled together. You'll see that all three of those words are highlighted at the right, but over at the left, the one Greek word it represents. And therefore, I have a corresponding selection. So that's pretty handy. If we were to do a search for the word assembled and press enter, you'll see that the word assemble is highlighted here and my search result is also highlighted in the Nestle Align. That's the second feature corresponding search results so if you want your search results to show up in all your bibles no matter which one you open this is the way to do it the next option is corresponding words this is actually a pretty powerful tool i'm going to go ahead and check the box i have two options hover or click i definitely recommend click if you have this feature on hover it's going to constantly be annoying you so put on click and if you want to have it in all resources click show in all appropriate resources now notice the menu choices below, same word, same surface text, same lemma, same root. What's going on here? The idea is this, if I click on a word, let's say assembled, and that same word exists in the text, it too will be highlighted, helping me visually see the words being repeated. Same surface text, same idea. Same lemma means it's the same dictionary form and same root is the same underlying root word. Now let's see this in action. I'm gonna click on the X to close my search results. And I'm gonna click on the word they. Notice immediately, they got highlighted immediately because it's the same word, same surface text. Okay, that's the one that's checked. If I click same word, it really doesn't change the results too much. Now let's click on same lemma and uncheck these other ones. Now if I click assembled, nothing happens. Let's choose the word the. Now this is fascinating because though you don't see the word the every time, like they to Israel, et cetera, it is telling you that there's an article there and that's why it's highlighting. So sometimes the underlying Greek word can repeat and therefore we're seeing it in other places. And same root works much the same way. So if we click on baptize, we can see that that root word is in common even though the word may be different. In this case, it happened to be the same identical word, but nevertheless, it's pretty helpful. So I'm just gonna click on a few others. Here's times. Uh, this is Strong's number 3588, and this is Strong's number 5550. So I'm gonna click on but. Now here we have a great example where it's the same root word. I'm gonna float my mouse over but, and that's the underlying Greek word day. I'm gonna go down here, and it's the word and, and it's the same underlying root word. And this is handy because even though it's translated different English, it ultimately is rooted in the same word. So be aware of these capabilities when it comes to corresponding words. My advice is choose same lemma. That's the most useful for identifying same underlying words. However, if you choose to do same root, you're going to find thematic connections and that can be very powerful as well. So you might want to choose both. And that way you won't know right away if it's same lemma or same root, but when you float your mouse over them, you can check to see if it's the same Greek word or not. And that can be very handy. Now the next option is discourse features Greek and discourse features Hebrew. There's a lot here. I'm gonna go ahead and check it. And I want you to see what's going on. Now, if you have this database and book in your library, you will see these additional icons appear. Notice I have a block diagram now. I have some tagging at the left and I have various symbols spread throughout the book as well as color coding like gray and so forth. These are discourse symbols. Each symbol tells you something about what's going on in the narrative, and that's the purpose of these. We're not gonna explain all those, but I want you to be aware that you can turn those on and off and have them there visually to view. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck discourse features Greek. All right, the next option is emphasize active lemmas. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that so it's enabled. This is a little bit unique too. So let's say we right click on our word assembled. We choose from the right click menu, the circle icon, and we'll have more training on this later. Just follow along with me to see the example. So we click on the lemma 
and then we click Bible Word Study. When the Bible Word Study opens up, you'll see that over at the right now, that word has been highlighted in red. So this is the active lemma being enabled. In fact, we click on the three dots and check emphasize active lemmas to disable the feature. Even though the Bible Word Study window is still open, you'll see that the lemma within the Bible is not highlighted. So I like this feature because it lets me see a connection between a various report and so forth. So that's really handy. Let's go ahead and click the X to close this down. Notice as soon as I close the Bible Word Study report, the highlight went away as well. Now let's click the three dots once again, scroll down, and let's go to Propositional Outlines. We'll check that. And what the Propositional Outline is basically some additional tagging at the word and phrase level that tells us something about the word or phrase. So here we're in Acts 1 and we see topic, the former treatise. We see an action, I have made. We see who's being addressed, Theophilus. What's the action of all that? So these propositional outlines can tell you a lot and can be searched upon, and we'll show you in future training videos how to do that. But notice over at the right, we have a block diagram. Now, sometimes that block diagram can be a little um, hard to read when the window is very narrow like it is here. But if we were to right-click on the Bible, choose open in a floating window, now we can really see the block diagram much more clearly. Very powerful feature there. So I'm going to right-click on the tab and choose from the menu, dock this tab, and I'll put the Bible right back where it is. So again, to turn it off, we click the three-dot menu, scroll down, and choose Propositional Outlines. Speaker labels are very handy. You can see I have a little microphone icon right next to the person. When I uncheck that, the speaker microphone goes away. Let's check it to put it back. I think that's important to let you know who is speaking. And that's why I like to have both the addressee and the speaker icon working together so I can see who's being talked to and who's speaking. This is especially handy when you change locations and you're not sure in the context who's talking to who. And then the last one is timeline events. This can be very useful if there's a specific event going on. Now, timeline events is something you typically won't see in a Bible, but you will see in other books. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to click the library icon, and I'm going to open up a complete book of when and where in the Bible throughout history. You notice in a book like this, you're going to see a little flag icon, and when you float your mouse over it, it tells you the date. So I'm going to click the three dots, and I'm going to uncheck timeline events and therefore the flag goes away. The date information that's in the text is still there and you can get at it with a right click, but having that little flag icon is real handy to let you know this has been tagged for a specific time period. So be aware of that. Though you may not see in the Bible, you will see it in other books. Let me go ahead and click the X to close the tab. Let's click the three dots once again, scroll down, and that takes care of our resource section. You can now see that there's a lot of menu options to be aware of to customize the book just the way you want it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and check community notes and expand it. These are the various notes that I'm connected to through my faith life groups. Now I'm going to jump to Genesis 1.1, and you're going to see an icon appear. That's this little green chat box. That's a community note. So when you see that, you float your mouse over it, you'll see show community notes. And if you click on it, a window will appear and now you can see all the Genesis notes. And this is real handy to see other insights from other people. I'm going to go ahead and click the X to close this tab. I'm going to click the three dots, and I'm going to uncheck community notes for now. The next section is media. Let me check that and expand it. We have three types of media icons, atlas maps, other media, and verse of the day. Now, I want to make sure that these are all enabled for all my resources. So I'm going to do showing all appropriate resources. Other media, showing all appropriate resources, and Versa Today, showing all appropriate resources. Now, I have found this to be a little finicky at times because I know, for example, there is a media for Genesis 1.1, and I still don't quite understand why it's not consistent. Sometimes if you close a book down and you reopen it, sometimes the media icon will appear. Let me go ahead and click on that. Go back to Genesis 1.1. Sometimes it doesn't. It's really peculiar, and I'm just not sure why it's not consistent. But nevertheless, it's a real handy feature and uh, can let you know if there's media associated with that particular verse. And that's a real useful feature. But again, it seems to be a little 
uh, buggy at times as well. Let's click on the three dots and we'll leave media enabled. The next section is notes and highlights. These are the notes and highlights you create. If you want to see them, check the box and then check the specific notes and highlights. And if you have any, they'll show up there. Now, in this particular book, I had one little note and highlight right here, verse two, and I can see the icons. So as soon as you enable it, all those icons will appear to let you know, hey, there's a note at this passage. Now, this works exactly the same way for notes and highlights corresponding. Now, what's going on here? Well, let's say these notes and highlights are unique to one Bible. You made them in a, let's say, New American Standard, but you're now looking at the King James. By having notes and highlights corresponding enabled, it'll automatically appear in the resource you're looking at. That can be really handy. That's why if you look at notes and highlights, look at the first three, no notebook, zero gospel, John, first John. And we go here, we got no notebook, BTI, Gospel, John, etc. So sometimes there are some differences, but that's to let you know that, hey, if I've got a note in another resource, when I have notes and highlights corresponding enabled, I will be notified. And you can see all the extra information and highlighting that appears. I'm going to uncheck both those. Passage list can be pretty handy. And what this will do is let you see where you are in a particular reading plan. So I'm going to check this box, zero one day. And look what happened. The visual filter or the window has now changed. I'm looking only at the verses in a particular passage list. So think of this as a filter. So you're only looking at those passages in your Bible window. Now you might be wondering, what do I use this for? Well, let's say you're trying to memorize some passages. Well, you could do it right here in your Bible, or you just want to look for these verses. In fact, let me give you a real practical example. So I'm going to scroll down and pick a different list here. So let's say I have the Ten Commandments checked. So now I've got a visual filter of the Ten Commandments. Now I'm going to do a specialized search. I'll do an inline search, and I'm going to say, thou shall. Okay, and that's because I'm in the King James. I have to use the thee and thou language. So I'm just going to do thou. Notice two things. One, I'm only looking at my Ten Commandments passage list, and only the word thou in those passages are highlighted. So this kind of reduces what you're looking at, or it's giving you kind of a Bible that just has the verses from your passage list. This is very powerful and a great way to kind of combo search without being overwhelmed. Now I'm going to click the X to close down the search, click on the X to close the inline search. I'm going to click the three dots and I'm going to uncheck passage list. The next one is reading plans. This is real handy. Uh, here I have read the NAS in one year. I'm going to click on the triangle at the right and choose show in all appropriate resources. This particular reading plan kicks off where I left off in Genesis 7. And so there's the reading plan. I like having the reading plan in all my Bibles. That way I can jump around and I'll always know what the next plan is. So if you have a reading plan, you can actually turn that locator on or off. And I'm going to uncheck that. And now my reading plan is turned off visually. The last section in the menu is visual filters. This is a powerful feature. I use this all the time, but I do like the flexibility of turning it on and off visually. So I'm going to scroll down and go to my Learn Logos. And I have one that's called otverbslearnlogos.com. I'm going to check the box and right away you can see what's going on. Now I have some special coding here. The S in the yellow circle means single. P in the orange circle is plural. That can be really handy when you're dealing with the word you. All the commands are highlighted. So if it's a command, it's green. Here's a, a verb. Uh, here's a blue, uh, imperfect, etc. Purple for participles. And I also have the verb form, cal, cal, pl, etc. And then I have some special verb forms. When it's like, for example, wa consecutive or vav consecutive, depending on how you pronounce your Hebrew. So this is a really handy way to see what's going on visually with the verbs and some of the personal pronouns. So visual filters are great, but they can overwhelm you if there's too many of them. So having them selected beforehand, and then you just check or uncheck the visual filter icon to enable or disable. Very, very powerful. All right, this ends our first part of Interlinear Bible. We've got several more videos. We got a lot more features to show. So hang in there. We've got a lot more to show you how you can really maximize the potential of these tools.